What is up everyone? It is Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. And so today's video is a little different. It's more like talking, commentary style video, but it is still college application related because today we are going to be talking about Netflix's new documentary, Operation Varsity Blues, which is based off of the college admission scandal that you all have probably heard about. So we're going to talk about this documentary. I watched it and I thought it was really interesting and fascinating and I thought it was a good topic to to talk about and I'm also going to talk a little bit about how movies today like those coming-of-age movies where high school students are going to go to college soon are very unrealistic and so if you're new to my channel hello my name is Rachel I just recently graduated from UC Berkeley in May 2020 and I post a lot of college related and post-grad content and so this might be a little bit ironic but if you're a student applying to colleges this year you should definitely check out study hall college consulting it's a team of myself and other UC Berkeley students where we specialize in reviewing college application essays and consulting one-on-one -on -one with students. If you want free resources, check out our website also because we have a free blog and on our social medias we actually post a bunch of free tips and tricks, so definitely check those out. Hey, Papa! Hey! So let's get on with the video. So starting off with some background information, this entire scandal came out in 2019. It is called the 2019 College Admissions Bribery Scandal, also known as Operation Varsity Blues, hence the Netflix documentary title. And so this scandal is a criminal conspiracy scandal to influence undergraduate admissions decisions at the top universities in the United States. And so 53 people have been charged as a part of this conspiracy, whether it was college coaches who accepted money to allow non-student athletes to pretend to be student athletes and be recruited into their sports team as a way to get admitted to the university, to parents paying to have their kids pretend to be sports athletes to get them admitted, or parents also paying to have someone else take the SAT or ACT for their child. Child. And so you can see the entire list of the people that were charged online if that's something that interested you. So that is some background information on the college admissions scandal. Definitely do your own research, check out the Netflix documentary if you wanted to learn more. But now I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the themes from the Netflix documentary that I think are super important and were brought to light because of the documentary. So I think a big theme throughout the college admissions scandal is the idea idea of prestige and what is prestige. I feel like when you think of prestige in the college admissions universe, you pretty much think of the top ranked schools. So like the top 20, the top 50 schools in the United States, the Ivy League schools, stuff like that. And everyone wants to go to those top schools. And basically with prestige, it comes with that brand name, that recognizable school name. Some quotes that really stood out in the movie, one of them is most students who want to go to college could find a college to go to the problem is far too many students want to go to the same colleges. Another quote is that the United States has over 3,000 colleges. You have infinite choices. Everyone wants to go to the top 20, the top 50 colleges in the United States, but 3,000 colleges, there are so many choices. So it really brings up the question of, okay, what makes something more prestigious? It also brings up the question if news reports that do rankings of colleges Colleges, are they able to actually rank colleges or are college rankings just another way to create prestige, get money for universities, create this aura around the top colleges that they're so much better than other colleges because they are number one, two, three, like look how cool that is. And also going to a prestigious university doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be more wealthy or more successful than students who go to other colleges colleges because really the college experience is all about what you make of it. If you don't have the drive, the passion, the work ethic, no matter where you go, it's going to be very difficult to succeed. 
Another big theme is the idea of money and integrity because throughout the documentary you see real wiretapped calls of parents and Rick Singer, the guy behind the college admission scandal, and basically the parents are asking Rick to use the side door in order to get their students into the top college or university of your choice. And so that really brings up the question, at what point are you compromising your own morals to get ahead? Like, do you live with a guilty conscience or are these parents justifying what they're doing to themselves as right or okay? Do you think about the consequences of your actions? If you had the kind of money that these families do and if you had that kind of expendable money to be paying like half a million dollars to get your child into college, why would you not put that money towards getting your child a tutor or other resources to help your child score better on the standardized tests rather than paying someone to take the test for you. The people who participated in this scandal, they probably justified it to themselves as a way of saying like, oh, we have the money, we have the means, so if we don't take advantage of the money and the means that we have, then we're being disadvantaged. Which is like so insane because it really brings up the questions of morality, ethics, like do you value your integrity or not? Another big theme in the documentary is privilege. So a lot of the people who participated in the scandal, they're well off, they have a lot of money already, they come from wealthy families, and yet they still chose to cheat, still chose to use the side door versus doing it the way everyone else does it and getting a tutor, buying those SAT, ACT prep books, studying for those exams, going to the gym every day in high school to go work out, to practice your sport, going to your sports practice every day, you know, waking up at the crack of dawn to go to your sports practice, you have to work so freaking hard throughout your entire life, even in high school, to get those grades. You have to take so many AP classes to even stand out. You have to study so long for the SAT, ACT to get those high scores. And I feel like with the college admission scandal, like the amount of privilege is just a stab in the gut for everyone else who had to work so hard in high school to get the grades, to get the scores in order to apply to college. And even more so for students who need the test grades and need the scores in order to get scholarships to even afford to go to college. And so it's just such a stab that people who don't even want to go to college are having the opportunity to attend college. And then on the other hand, if you're one of those students involved in the scandal who genuinely loved learning, you maybe could have gotten into that university on your own, but your parents didn't have enough faith in you to study on your own, to get into the college on your own. So then they did this side door method and paid a bunch of money to get you into college. If you didn't know about the scandal going on behind your back, then it's like your parents' decision is going to affect your entire life pretty much. If you got expelled from the college after the scandal went live or if you got your diploma rescinded if you already graduated from college. And so I think the students involved in the scandal brings up a really interesting conversation. And so those are some of the major themes in the documentary. Definitely check out our Study Hall College Consulting Instagram and Facebook pages because we did a whole post on the documentary. So if you wanted to hear more of our thoughts or themes, definitely check that out. And so now I'm going to talk a little bit about the unrealistic expectations of college admissions and the unhealthy dynamic that it creates. And so for unrealistic expectations, I feel like in all of those teen coming of age movies, those movies where the students are juniors or seniors in high school, they're applying to colleges right now, really creates an unrealistic expectation for everyone watching those movies. Because you know, for me, growing up as a child, I would watch those movies and in every single one of these movies, the students got into top colleges. They were all going to an Ivy League. It must be normal 
that everyone just gets into a bunch of Ivy League schools. Like, that's so awesome, you know? And then as a kid watching these movies, then you sort of internalize, like, oh, all of my favorite movie characters, TV show characters, they're all somehow getting into all of these top colleges, which is just sort of untrue in real life. And so a recent movie where you see this, I think, is in the To All the Boys I Loved Before, the third movie, basically where Laura Jean and Peter are applying to colleges and making their college decision. Peter gets into Stanford, which is probably unrealistic, and so that's a thing, you know, TV shows, movies are just showing up. Everyone can get into these colleges. It's not like it has a 4% acceptance rate or anything. But anyways, so Laura Jean gets rejected from Stanford, and then something that peeves me off so much in the movie was basically after she got rejected from Stanford, she's like, oh my gosh, now I need to choose between my two safety schools of Berkeley or NYU. And I'm like, what the heck? In what universe are you all in that Berkeley and NYU are bad choices or like safety schools. Like at first she was like really hating on the schools of like, I don't wanna go to those schools. So in the books, they actually change the colleges that Laura Jean and Peter want to go to where in the books, they are actually thinking of the University of Virginia rather than Stanford. And Laura Jean is rejected from UVA. So then she wants to maybe go to the college of William and Mary so that they're close but then she goes on a college visit to UNC, so University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, which is totally different from the movie, so it's just interesting that they would change the colleges, and people online have brought this point up talking about state schools and prestige, why are you changing the school names kind of thing, but the author of the books has said that the movie is set in Portland, so it wouldn't really make sense to have the colleges be East Coast colleges. Also, I don't know, you could have set the film to be in any location that you wanted. <laughs> you didn't have to say it was in Portland even if you're filming in Portland. I don't know, I just find it so unrealistic and maybe it's because the writers of these movies are all adults and they're like years and years out of the high school and college admissions process. And then from these movies and TV shows, everyone else thinks that, oh yeah, you know, I want to go to those schools as well. I want to replicate it, which then just leads to disappointment because of the low acceptances at these top colleges, which then goes back to that prestige aspect. Anyways, <laughs> my rant over. I just feel like these coming of age movies are unrealistic and it creates expectations for high school students applying to college that are unrealistic as well. And that then creates this cycle of like discouragement like oh all of these famous movie characters can do it and I want to emulate them but I can't do it myself and then it creates more pressure on the student to take that extra AP class to study and not really have a social life in high school take those extra classes to get those better grades to study more and then you have these movie characters or the people that are involved in the college admission scandal literally like cheat their way or do nothing and get in into your dream school. And so yeah, definitely let me know down in the comments your thoughts on the Netflix documentary or these other coming of age movies where the actors are going to college. I definitely want to know your thoughts and let me know if you like these kind of like commentary talking style videos and I can definitely do more of them. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Definitely give this video a big thumbs up to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. As always, I post every single Sunday and Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern, so check back then. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.